ethnosperms. Their most familiar descendants are today's redwoods, firs, and pines, the gymnosperms that produce their seeds in cones. Pines produce clusters of male cones. Slice one to see the chambers where the sperm containing pollen grains are produced. Maturing together, male cones can fill the air with pollen grains, each equipped with two air sacs, improving their air time. For fertilization to occur, pollen must reach female cones, developing at the top of a nearby tree. Cut one in half to see where the seeds are produced. When mature, the winged seeds are released from the cone. In most cone-bearing gymnosperms, the photosynthetic structures are needles. A section through a pine needle shows a complex photosynthetic factory. A forest of gymnosperms absorbs huge amounts of atmospheric carbon dioxide, helping to moderate the present increase in atmospheric CO2 by converting it into cellulose, wood. Around 100 million years ago, a new group of plants appeared, the flowering plants or angiosperms. In this group, the seed is contained in an ovary that often matures to become a tasty fruit. Of course, the nutritious ovary is just the plant's genetic trick for enticing an animal to spread its seeds. But this little lawn weed requires no animal attractants. These seeds will float away on parachutes. Flowering plants are basically seed factories, but to become a seed, an egg must first be fertilized. Grasses and a few other angiosperms use airborne pollen, but most angiosperms embellish their sex organs with attractors, colorful petals and sweet nectar, an invitation to insects, bats and birds. In the process of going for the nectar, the pollinator picks up the pollen and transfers it to the female parts of the next flower on its feeding route. The shape of a flower is often related to a specific kind of pollinator. A tiger lily shows the typical flower parts involved in angiosperm reproduction. In the center is the ovary containing the eggs. Cut a section and see them. Thrusting forward out of the ovary is the pistil, the structure that will receive the pollen and provide a path for sperm to travel to the eggs in the ovary below. Six male sex organs, the anthers, surround the pistil. Each anther produces thousands of pollen grains. Because male and female gametes mature at different times, self-pollination is usually avoided. Sexual reproduction between different individuals produces new gene combinations in the offspring. This variety allows natural selection to constantly fine-tune individuals to their changing environment. Their sexy ways have made flowers the most adaptable plants of all. There are parasitic plants, such as dodder and mistletoe. Others that live like mushrooms, tapping into dead roots and decaying organic material. Others digest the nitrogen-rich bodies of insects, making possible life in environments where nitrogen is scarce. Some plants live entirely submerged, while others get by on a few drops of water each year. All have impressive survival equipment, chemicals and thorns that discourage browsers, short waxy leaves reduce water loss, even tiny goo cells that prevent insects from climbing up and eating the reproductive parts. Plants manufacture the molecules of life, molecules required by animals. They help trap moisture, creating a water cycle. They sop up CO2, 
generate oxygen, and provide homes for other organisms. They interact with bacteria, fungi, protists, and animals to create an interdependent web of life, Earth's biosphere. Thank <laughs> you. 